Oh, hello, year fives and sixes. Um, you'll see today that I'm wearing a set of headphones. This is supposed to help cancel out any background noise going on in the back of the video. I appreciate the feedback that some of you guys have given me with regards to the recording of these videos and that you can't always hear me properly due to noises and things that are going on in the background. And I can understand that, you know, my music room is right near a train station after all, and we have planes flying around as well. So I'm hoping that this way eliminates some of that background sound. It does sort of limit what I can do. No, no, it doesn't. I, th I think I can work with this. All right, so I hope that the sound quality is better. Please let me know, give me feedback in the comments in this video or come see me in person so that I know that I did not waste a heck of a lot of money on these really expensive headphones that don't do as good a job as what I thought it would. All right, so today's topic, so we're getting into the medieval folk music stuff and we have discussed the basics the general history of it, a brief overview. This um, lesson, we're gonna focus more on the sacred or the church music. Now, as mentioned last week, as you're well aware, the church, the Catholic church, had a very strong hold on medieval way of life. So unlike today where you could choose to go to church or not go to church or choose to go to whichever church you want, the church at that time in the medieval Europe was the Catholic Church and you did attend on Sunday and you attended mass and you attended all the religious festivals and everything was revolved around religious life. We can't imagine that today because we live more of a worldly secular environment, but that's just the way it was. And obviously that affected the way music was developed. The church basically dictated what music was appropriate and what music was not appropriate. So that did affect how people defined and developed music of that time period. Um, the characteristics that I wanna look at in our lessons today. Um, first characteristic, the early, early, early medieval church music used drone for the bass line. We looked at drone in class last week, how it's that one note that um, creates the bass line and the foundation for all the, um, for the melody that goes on. Um, secondly, also in the early, early, early medieval church, um, instruments were not encouraged to be played in church. They felt that instruments sort of took away the um, focus, which is worshipping God. So most songs at that time um, in church were sung a cappella, meaning without any background instrumentation. Your voice was the instrument and you sang. Again, in the early church, everyone sung in unison, as I mentioned last week. So no one could sing in harmony because that took away from the text, the biblical scripture, whatever it is you're singing about. So the church at that time believed that any sort of embellishment or any kind of way of harmonizing it, first of all, it detracts your worship. Um, you're not focusing on the message, the scripture that you're singing. And it was also considered like a form of idolatry, meaning um, you're putting your own talents and skills first above God. So you're not really focusing on worshipping him, you're more of worshipping yourself and you're in love with yourself, you're up yourself, basically, which we know today isn't true and people's attitudes towards sacred and church music have changed over time, obviously because we do have church music today that is harmonic and isn't just on that drone effect. But back in the day, it was very, very basic. Um, this week's lesson is very simple. I'm going to... This online lesson, I mean, it's going to be very simple. I'm going to show you some examples of church music. One of them is a canon, which we'll learn about next week. We'll learn about what canons are, but I'll expose you to that. Um, Kyrie eleison, I sing that in canon for you guys, so you can have an idea on what that sounds like. Um, remember that the church spoke Latin, so typical of church music is sung in Latin. So Kyrie eleison is a Latin song. The translation is, Lord have mercy. 
I'm also going to show you some few examples of Donna Novus Pacem, which um, translated from Latin is let peace or freedom reign on earth. And um, you have a listen to those and I'll have some questions for you to answer regarding that. So it's pretty straightforward, very simple. Um, you can write your answers in the comments below or you can tell me in class what you um, heard. It's just a listening task and answering some questions. Simple as that. All right, this is Mr. Chiodo signing off for now because I'll have my lovely year twos and threes coming in any minute now. Yes, I had some technology issues and I started recording rather late, but I think I got the gist of what I wanted to say in this short period of time. Um, until next time, bye for now.